What's up guys, how's it going? It's John, and in this video I'm gonna take a closer look at a new game for the Genesis called Coffee Crisis. This is by Mega Cat Studios, came out last year, 2017. They did, did a Kickstarter for it, uh, and it's a, actually a really fun beat-em-up game for the Genesis, So, and I'm a huge fan of the Sega Genesis, and for those who live in PAL regions, they do have a PAL version available for you guys as well. So I'm gonna do an unboxing, I'm gonna show you uh, some gameplay, of course, and sh finally share with you my final thoughts I want to thank Mega Cat Studios for hooking me up with this copy to check out. Um, I'm a big fan of new games for classic consoles, as many of you guys may know. Um, and it's something, it's a niche that I really appreciate for sure uh, when it comes to retro games. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are, and let's take a closer look at the unboxing and some gameplay. So here's a closer look at Coffee Crisis. I love the clamshell case like you would find uh, in your typical Genesis games back in the day. Black Fridge Coffee House is kind of the whole premise of the story. I'll explain more about the story once I show some gameplay, but it's actually a real, real coffee house, and I believe it's in, in the Pittsburgh area. Let's open this clamshell up. You get a nice color manual, different characters, different enemies, different bosses, different upgrades. You have two characters to play from in this game. This is the team out of uh, Pittsburgh, okay? And yeah, the Black Forge Coffee House is actually a real coffee house in Pittsburgh. I guess there's like a hard rock, rock theme behind it. Thank you, they did Kickstarter, story snaps with some credits. Pretty small team of people working on this game. It looks like they have uh, like seven or eight people working on it, which is cool. Uh, definitely it looks like eight. They have uh, eight hard working people on it. And it's awesome. Here's the, the cartridge itself. Well, this is like a transparent, almost like pinkish red. But it's not one of those snap together uh, shells that you often see for Genesis new games. It actually has this Sega logo on it, which is cool. So they actually take, took the mold from uh, a Genesis mold and made a whole new cart from it, which is awesome. I'm really curious how they did that. And you can see the board, it's got the screws. So the production quality is good. I definitely appreciate that. Nice quality sticker. A lot of times with the stickers, you see, uh, you can kind of see where, uh, you know, the quality's not, is, uh, it's not high death or anything like that, but definitely in this case, high quality sticker. Let's check out some gameplay. When you turn on the game, this is the main menu. It is two player, you can play two player co-op. There's options, there's passwords. Hello Heroes are the Kickstarter backers. So it lists all everyone who backed the Kickstarter, which I think is a cool idea. Now they did this, you can kind of scroll through and speed it up. It's kind of a nice touch. You can see there's a lot of people who supported this game. And uh, I don't have two players playing right now, so I'll just play single player, but there's an option. You can turn the music on and off. Music is like a metal style music difficulty. You can do easy, hard, or metal, which is super hard. Uh, you can do different sound, e sound effects like alien cries, all that. We'll start with uh, one player. There's two characters you can choose from. Nick is one of the characters. Ashley is the other. Um, Looks like Nick, his main weapon is like a bag of beans, coffee beans. So the whole, whole premise is uh, you are these guys who work at Black Forge Coffee House. And this group of aliens who's basically controlling your your Wi-Fi. Uh, they've taken over the Wi-Fi in the world. And then your goal is to kind of save them. Um, they're trying to create the, what they're calling the Spear Net. Smir, Smir Net. And here the aliens are. I love... Uh, the artwork in this is, is great. It reminds me of like classic uh, like Day of the Tentacle style artwork uh, from LucasArts. It's really cool. This is kind of an intro level. And here you go. There, there's several attacks. You can hit, go up to them, hit, hit B is kind of a quick attack. I'm sorry, A is a quick attack, and then B is kind of a, I guess, a stronger attack. When all the enemies die, you can see sometimes they leave behind various items. Sometimes it's, it's, it's power. I'm not sure what the coffee quite does. Uh, and then the middle screen, top middle screen, is kind of how many levels I have, how many guys I have their coffee bag beans. So right here I'm kind of, uh, there's a warp. Pretty easy stage. That one guy with like the elf hat, he's there kind of to help you out throughout the game. There are bosses, there are eight levels in this game. Um, and there's a really good metal soundtrack, which is cool. Skinny Chesney. Kenny Chesney, obviously, it's a pun on that. 
It closed to save the world. You see, Ashley has like, a, I guess she has like a blender in her hand or something. So there's this like special blend, demon blend coffee bag, which you're supposed to use, which is, uh, I guess, your the weapon they're using for this. And grab smaller enemies, hitting A. And B is a charge. So if you hold B, you can actually do a charging weapon. You can like, in, in case of, of Nick, you can just hold it and he spins it like that. And it's a more powerful. I love the grannies with the walkers. It's hilarious. So one thing I do appreciate about this game is there's, there's actually a handful of different enemies. A lot of times with beat em ups, you get stuck with the same kind of style of enemy, like in Maximum Carnage, for example, and other ones. Where this one, um, there's actually a nice variety of different enemies. Old guys, the prostitute, or whoever that is. You can destroy, you know, cans and other things to get items as well. New stage, that's a muffin that gives you health. Health is in the top left corner of the screen. You can destroy these, you know, safety cones. <laughs> Grandma Ma with the walker, it's hilarious. I guess one thing, uh, when, when it scrolls, you walk and scroll, I guess he's kind of close to the edge of the screen. I kind of wish he was more central. When the, the when the screen finally starts scrolling, but not a huge deal. Here is uh, some weapons you can get. You get a bat. Pick it up by hitting A. And there is a special spin move as well if you hit both A and B, I believe as well. So nice detailed uh, scenes. Once you have a weapon, you can't charge it up, though. You can't just hold it uh, to wind it up. Get myself a donut, get some more health, get a bunch of enemy, uh, get, get a bunch of lives, rather. Here's a plywood. <laughs> so funny. First level, obviously, they're giving, giving me a lot. I'm playing on easy, so it's giving me a lot of one ups and, and health, which is nice. They're the enemies. Here's the first kind of boss battle. Uh, he takes quite a bit of damage. I like how it kind of shows his energy right there, though, which is cool. If I wind it up, you take a lot more damage if you just. Charge him up with a hit. The thing on the ground is kind of a warp, so once I uh, defeat him, it's going to open up a warp. It will allow me to uh, to go to the next stage here. So we will see here in a second. I gotta go to the next screen here. You see the warp opens up and it transports me to the next stage. There's a password-based system, which is cool. And here, here's like a. I guess this is uh, where the, the pirates play, right? Uh, and it kind of looks like uh, Pittsburgh scenery there. That's really cool. But these, here's another quick boss battle that you have to fight these two bald guys. There are a total of 12 soundtracks in this game, which is quite a bit for, for a homebrew game. Um, I don't even like to use the term homebrew because I think it makes it sound cheap, but this is a quality uh, new game for the Genesis. So here's a warp. And every once on between uh, levels there, it will take you to this like mini game like you see in, in Street Fighter 2, etc. Uh, where you have to basically bash buttons and get in the green. It kind of reminds me of like games like The Simpsons where you have these, <laughs> these button mashing parts of the game. Drinking coffee. Nice little touch. I'm going to share with you guys my uh, final thoughts on the game. So overall, what are my thoughts about Coffee Crisis? I'm actually, I, I like the game. I think it's cool. I love the production quality. I like how they made it look like a Sega Genesis game without using any of the trademarks. I think that's pretty smart of them. Uh, and uh, I love the fact that they do have a limited edition version available as well, which comes with like a, a holder case for the cartridge you can put it on, which is cool. If you're a fan of beat em ups, uh, definitely check this game out. Uh, I love the music. The soundtrack is cool. It definitely reminds me of the old school like Genesis games, almost like Maximum Carnage style uh, games where you have that like rock and roll hardcore like music. I uh, love the feel. I also think it's cool that they included Black Forge Coffee House, which is actually a real place in Pittsburgh. That's super awesome. Uh, so overall, I think it's cool. For 40 bucks, you really can't go wrong. I'll put a link below. Uh, thanks for checking them out. 
Uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.